Hi there! In this video, I'm going to go over how to solve this Morse code problem in leak code. This problem gives you a mapping in Morse code from each letter to its Morse code symbol. For example, A maps to dot dash and B maps to dash dot dot dot. All the mappings from A to Z are over here. We're given this, and we're given this problem. We're given an input array of words, for example, this four-word array, having Jin, Zen, Gig, and Message. And our task is to transform these words into the Morse code equivalents. So Jin maps to dash dash dot 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 dash dot and then gig and message are also transformed. Once you have these transformations, the problem asks to figure out how many different transformations you've received. So in this case, even though there are four different words, you actually get only two different transformations. This dash dash dot 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 dash dot happens two times because Jin and Zen have the same transformation. The same thing occurs for gig and message. Some restrictions are that the length of the words will be at most 100. And each word will have a length in range 1 to 12. And the words will only be in lowercase letters. OK, so when I started this problem, this, is, this was my initial thought process. I would create a hash table or an array to store all the Morse code values. Then I would transform all the words and store them into a hash set. I would use a hash set because a hash set will take away the complications of having duplicate transformations. To transform the words, I'm going to use a helper function. Finally, I can just return the size of the hash set to get the number of unique transformations. So you're given this original method that you have to implement unique Morse code representations, which gives you your array of words, and you'll return the integer of the number of unique transformations. So what I first did was I created a set, and since sets use generics, I use string inside of it, and I named my set transform sets. Then I knew I would have to loop over all my words, so I use a simple for loop from one to the length of the words array. And then in my transform set, I would add each transformation of each word. So I have this transform word method that I've implemented, that I've implemented down here. So before we go into that, let's just assume it works properly and that once I call this function, I have the transformed word. I've added it, and then once I'm done with this whole loop, I will have all the transformations in my set. After that, I return the transformed set. So up here, you'll notice I create an array of Morse codes. And that was done by just copying these codes over here and format, formatting them a bit just to make it look a little better. Finally, let's go into the logic of transform word. It takes in a string. And we're going to use a string builder here to slowly build up our transformed word. We use a string builder instead of a string because string builders are mutable while strings are not mutable. So in certain languages, I think st strings can be mutable. But in Java, you would just create a whole new object. Um, anyway, it makes the code a lot easier. So for each word, we're going to do another loop, similar loop that goes from zero to the length of each word. And if you remember some of your string methods, you can get a certain character of a word by using char at. So for each, to get each character, we're gonna use char at, at i. And this is a trick you'll probably see if you were, if you learned C before, but each, each character can be represented as an integer, usually from I think one or zero to 128. And in order to get 
um, the relative value of the integer, you subtract the value of a. So I think a in ASCII is actually about 70 something or 80 something. So what this does is that it get you about 70 something, it will subtract 70 something for a, and then you get zero for a, which is our first, um, the index of our first Morse code value. For b, you get one, for c, you get two, and it works out very well to get the appropriate Morse codes from the array. So now that you got the correct code for each letter, you can just append it to your code word string builder. And then finally, since you're returning a string, you have to convert the, the string builder to a string. But there you have it. You have your transformation logic and you have solved the problem. I can press submit. And this actually does quite well. It runs one millisecond faster than all other submissions and also uses much less space. Um, space and time complexity are pretty much in terms of the number of words or the number of letters, depending on how you want to look at it. But it's basically linear time um, because it varies based on the number of words you have in your array, in your input array, and the size is linear time because you create this hash set over here, and it's going to be, in the worst case, the same size as your array. So thanks for watching, and hopefully this helped. This was not a terribly complex problem, but if you're not used to some of these concepts, then it's good practice, and it's good to be aware that they exist. Have a great day.